John chapter number 8. This is a very revealing chapter. There's 59 verses. We're not going to read all 59. But in this chapter, this chapter is really what put the Jews over the edge to where they hated Christ. In this chapter, he makes it in no uncertain terms that he is the Son of God, that God is his Father. Now, that doesn't sound like much to us because we always refer to the Lord as Father. But the Jews never did. They didn't know him as Father. They knew him as Jehovah. And when Jesus revealed that he was his Father, that made Jesus equal with God. And they began to hate him from this point forward. There was a bunch of them didn't like him in the first place. But they began to hate him, and they began to really seek how they could crucify him and do away with him. There's a lot of wonderful, profound truths in this chapter. But I want to focus on one that Jesus brings out. When we get our reading tonight, verse 28. John chapter 8, verse 28. The Bible says, Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am He. He's talking about His crucifixion. And that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone. For I do always those things that please him. Boy, wouldn't it be something if we could say that. Hmm? Verse 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Notice it said believed on him, not in him. You'd be hard-pressed in this country to find folks that don't believe in Jesus. But to believe on Him is to accept Him as Lord and Savior. We find in verse 31, it says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on Him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, we believe Abraham, we, they answered him, we be Abraham's seed. That's the first mention of Ebonics in the Bible, we be, anyway. We be Abraham's seed, somebody got it over there, all right? And we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one Father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your Father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your Father the devil." And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? 
He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We sure do thank you for the good singing. We thank you, Lord, for the good testimonies. We thank you for being a good God. Lord, we thank you for being our God. Lord, we're thankful that we do hear the word of God, and that we know them, because we know you. Now, Father, I pray if there be somebody in our midst who doesn't know you, that, Lord, you'd reveal unto them that tonight, that we might see them born again. I pray for the children of God. You'd edify them now. You'd strengthen them. You'd help them that, Lord, they might leave forth from this place and be a help to someone else. Now, Father, have your will and way amongst us. Forgive us where we have sinned and come short of your glory. Forgive us for taking for granted the good things of God. And forgive us for not being able to say in clear conscience what you said here in the Bible, that those things that we heard of you, we always do. Now, God, help us with that, that we might live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present day, that others might see God in us. Now, Father, bless, use this unworthy vessel, bind the powers of hell, get glory to your name. We'll thank you for it, for it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we do ask these things. Amen. Amen. There are three profound truths that Jesus expounds on in these verses that we read. The first thing that he expounds on is fatherhood. Can I say that he spends a lot of what we read speaking of whose father they were and whose father was his? Can I say he reveals the connection that he has with his father? Look again at verse 28. Then said Jesus unto them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. He shows the relationship or the connection he has with the Father. Uh, can I say that you and I that are saved ought to have a connection, a relationship with the Father? Uh, we ought to be able to stand and say, this is what he's done for me. Uh, and this is what he has spoken to me about in my life. Uh, and this is what I desire to do to please him. Uh, we see that he reveals or expounds on the connection that he has with his father. Now notice their claim of who their father is. Look at verse 33. Uh, it says, they answered him, we be Abraham's seed. And we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Look at verse 39. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which uh, I have heard of, of God. This did not Abraham. Their claim was Abraham was their father. Can I say the Jews hold the two... Uh, 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 primary, primary principles in the Bible Abraham and Moses can I say that Abraham is the father of faith Moses is the father of the law that's who God used to uh, uh, illustrate those things in the Bible uh, but if you're uh, trusting in Abraham and trusting in Moses you're not going to heaven you've got to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and put your faith in God Almighty can I say Moses and Abraham were just tools or instruments that God used to do great things. And can I say God has used men and God has used things throughout the Bible and throughout history to point men's attention to himself. So we find their claim of who their father is. We see the connection Jesus had with his father now, notice the clarification Jesus reveals unto them who their real father is. Verse 44, ye are of your father, the devil. Pretty plain. Uh, they got mad at him because he announced that he was the son of God. God was his father. But then he tells them who their father is, the devil. In other words, he's called them a bunch of devils. Hmm? Hmm? And you all think I'm mean. Y'all think I'm hard at times. Jesus told the religious crowds, hey, it's a den of vipers. Hmm? Can I say? Uh, preaching isn't for the faint of heart. 
The Bible isn't for sissies. Hmm? And it's not all-inclusive. It's not gender-friendly. Huh? It's the truth. Mm, two things about the truth. The truth hurts, but the truth will set you free. Hmm? Uh, so Jesus expounds on fatherhood. He also expounds on freedom. Again, in verse 32, And ye shall know the truth, or truth shall make you free. Verse 36, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Liberation comes from the Scriptures and from the Savior. That's the only way you'll be set free. Some of you uh, 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 could stand and testify. Uh, uh, you still have demons that haunt you of things that you were addicted to. Uh, but you met the Lord, uh, and the Lord broke the chain, uh, and the Lord set you free, uh, and the Lord is the one that helped you. Uh, can I say the Scriptures, the truth, and the Savior is only one that can set you free. Hmm? Those things that bog you down, those things that uh, uh, haunt you, uh, those things that cause you to doubt, those things that uh, uh, cause you to uh, have stress or distress in your life, uh, have anxiety in your life, and anything else the devil will use uh, can be broken by the Scriptures and by the Savior. Mm -hmm. And the only, the only thing that will give you help, friend. Uh, now, there are things you can do to give you some temporary relief, but the only thing that will set you free is the Lord Jesus Christ and the Word of God. Hmm? He expounds on fatherhood, expounds on freedom, but then he expounds a whole lot on following. Hmm? Listen, uh, folks can tell who you are by who you follow. Hmm? Huh? If uh, you tell me you follow Jimmy Swaggart, I'll tell you uh, you're not doctrinally sound. And Jimmy's more doctrinally sound than Joel or any of this other crowd that's on today. Hmm? Jimmy preached real good till he started uh, jibber jabbering. You know what I'm talking about, huh? A couple of you knew what I was talking about, but anyway, he deals with following. Look at verse 39. The second part of that verse says, "If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham." Look at verse 42. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Look in verse 44. He says, You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. Look at verse 47. He that is of God heareth God's words, ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. You know why there are some people who claim to be saved, but they still waller in the mud of the world? They don't know the Lord. Can I say, it's not your lip service that saves you. It's the Lord Jesus Christ that saves you. And if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Former things pass away, behold, all things become new. And can I say this? Uh, uh, somebody that gets born again, their life will change. It might not be an immediate change. It might take a little transition for them to get where they need to be, uh, but there'll be a change. They won't go to the same honky-tonks, uh, same hell holes, uh, uh, same mud puddles of this world. Uh, uh, you'll find them in church seeking after the Lord and having the joy of the Lord in their heart. Uh, something that has a bill and has feathers, has webbed feet and quacks is a duck. It looks like the world, sounds like the world, smells like the world, acts like the world, it's of the world. The Lord told us, be you holy for I'm holy. Hmm? I don't care what the church down the street's doing. I don't care about having rock bands and smoke on the stage and doing away with the pulpit, doing away with the Bible, having dramas and all this stuff. Uh, God chose through the foolishness of preaching to save them that would believe. Uh, and can I say, uh, uh, if it's uh, uh, new, it's not true. And if it's true, it's not uh, uh, new. And uh, Jeremiah said, uh, uh, seek you out the old paths uh, uh, and walk therein. That's the good way you find rest for your souls. Can I say, uh, uh, the old way still works, my dear friends. Uh, I'm not interested in anything new. Say, Brother Doug, you're just narrow-minded. I am about that narrow-minded right there. It's not in the Bible. I'm not interested. And if it gratifies your flesh, I guarantee you it's not pleasing God. Mm -hmm. uh, can I say every now and then, uh, 
uh, God uses the Word of God to skin us a little bit. Mm. But I'm not going to preach on that. I'm interested in verse 44. Verse 44 is a powerful verse. We learn a lot out of this verse. He says, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Now, if anybody know what Satan is, it was the Lord Jesus. I mean, the Lord Jesus has given us an eyewitness account of who Satan is. He's a liar. He's a murderer. Uh, there's no truth in him. Uh, uh, he expounds it from the very beginning. Uh, uh, the devil was a sorry, no good snake. So what he's telling us? Uh, isn't it amazing in Revelation 21, chapter number 8, the last thing that it mentions that will not be in the, in, in the portals of glory, it says, and all liars. Hmm? Hmm? I'm interested in this verse because it reveals the devil is a liar. Deception is his middle name. He deceived Eve by just barely twisting the word of God just a little bit. Is it any stretch of the imagination why most churches don't have church on Wednesday night, Miss Janet? Because they don't have the Bible. They've let the devil deceive them to a different version. Little deception. And let me just say this. If anybody ever says anything about the Bible, and they claim to be a Bible teacher or a Bible preacher, and it comes out of their mouths, uh, well, the original Greek, you note that burger, booger right there, he is a heretic. Uh, nobody has ever seen the originals. Uh, they were written on sheepskin, uh, and they uh, uh, deteriorated. And don't give me the Dead Sea Scrolls. That's not the Word of God. Uh, uh, but God uh, preserved His Word for you and I, uh, uh, and it's been handed down from generation to generation. Uh, I don't need the original Greek. Uh, I've got the English right here. Uh, and I've got exactly what I need. Uh, somebody went to school some one day and somebody told them about the original Greek and they uh, uh, deceived them away from the Word of God. Uh, and that booger that uses the original Greek uh, uh, will use the Vaticanus text uh, which came out of the Catholic Church uh, which came out of the pits of hell. Uh, and can I say, uh, uh, we use the Texas Receptus, uh, the original Greek for the common man. Uh, and can I say that uh, uh, Southern Greek text, the Texas Receptus, uh, uh, the only Bible that uses the Greek the apostles penned it down in is your King James Bible. Amen. And I'm not preaching on that either. I'm interested in this. Jesus said he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. I want to just give you a few things tonight on this thought. I want to preach on some falsehoods of Satan. Some falsehoods of Satan. Things that he says or spews that lies that people have embraced and it's dragging them off to hell. Even some good people I believe are saved will believe some of the lies of the devil. So let me just give you, because we could be here till Jesus comes talking about all the lies of the devil. The Bible tells us that we're not ignorant of his devices. He's a liar. Mark her down. The Bible says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He's walking among the world uh, uh, to and fro, spewing his lies. So he can deceive people and damn them to hell. And by the way, the Apostle Paul told us in Ephesus that he's the God of this world. Mm, he's the prince and power of the air. He has dominion in this world. Mm, but I got good news. Mm, the Lord has all power. Mm. So let me give you some of the falsehoods of Satan. Some of his lies includes this. You have plenty of time. 
Well, we don't know what a day brings forth. This might be our last day on earth. There's a lot of people yesterday thought that they was going to have today, but through a, a, a heart attack or through a car wreck uh, or through some other tragic uh, uh, thing, they're not in this world today. You don't know how much time you got. All you do know is you got today. That's why the Bible says, Harden not your heart. Today's the day of salvation. You don't know if you'll have another opportunity. Today's the, the day. But even if you can live till Jesus comes, you don't have plenty of time. Miss right, right. Nett, I was talking today. She says, what is going on in this world? I said, Jesus is coming. Hmm? Right. There is so much wickedness going on from the White House uh, to Main Street in this uh, country of ours. Uh, uh, the Lord has to be coming. Uh, uh, everybody's going off about half cocked. Uh, we've seen somebody today uh, 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 sitting at a traffic light a little bit longer than they should. Uh, uh, I was two cars back or he'd have heard from me. Uh, and the guy in front of us wasn't being a smart aleck. Just tapped his horn a little bit. Didn't lay on it like I would have. Uh, just tapped, And that person went berserk up there. Uh, uh, he wasn't uh, being ugly. Brother Brian's just saying hey buddy uh, I'd like to make this light. Uh, 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 and that person went nuts all the way down the highway uh, and I'm telling you that kind of stuff goes on all over uh, uh, because people have no conscience uh, of morality anymore uh, uh, people have no respect anymore uh, uh, people have bought into the lies of Satan because the Antichrist is about ready to come on the scene uh, the very essence of sin uh, is my right to my claim to myself uh, I'm the only one that matters uh, uh, I'm here to tell you my dear friends the Bible said God resisted the proud uh, but gives grace to the humble uh, hey uh, we've got a generation don't know how to work they're lazy uh, don't want a job on somebody else to give to them uh, hey we've got a generation uh, of folks that don't care about uh, uh, the law don't care about patriotism uh, don't care about fighting for our country uh, don't care about anything about uh, anything that matters. Uh, just let me enjoy having my fun. Amen. We live in a day and age where so many people are on drugs because they have no, not enough self-esteem to get out and work, have a family, yeah. live a good life in America. Used to America was the land of opportunity. Now it's the land of a cesspool. Right. Mm. Yeah. We've got so many politicians that are so two-faced. Mm -mm. Joe Biden can ship people from the border all over the country, but God help you if you want to ship them somewhere. And God help you if you want to arrest them. Uh, you know why they call them illegal? Because they're illegal. Used to, somebody's illegal, they went to jail. Now they just got to turn their heads and let them come on in. Now, uh, that may not mean much to you, but they're soaking up our welfare and our benefits. How come illegals are getting hospitalization, uh, but we got veterans living underneath bridges because nobody shared anything with them? Well, don't get me started. I'm just telling you, 2 Timothy chapter 3 has come to pass. When they call that which is good evil and that which is evil good, and all that list of things Paul gives us in those first few verses are here. Amen. We don't have plenty of time. If you're going to do anything for Jesus, you better do it right now. Mm, he's a coming. Could come back today. And I don't know who he is, and I'm not a date setter, but I guarantee you the Antichrist is alive somewhere here in this world. Mm, uh, we don't have that much time. So how can you say that? Because Jesus told the Jews in Matthew 24 when the fig tree buddy said, this generation shall not pass until the Lord comes back. And can I say, he's talking about a second coming. So that means uh, seven years prior to a second coming, the church is out of here. And can I say, a generation is 70 years, 80 if you're blessed. Are you listening? Right. Israel became the nation in 1948. Yeah. That means we're living on borrowed time right now church could go out of here any second and you better be ready for one of the lies of the devil you got plenty of time you better get your family under the preaching of the gospel they don't have plenty of time mm. 
Uh, can I tell you something? Churches out of here, if they've heard the gospel, there's no hope for them. The Lord's going to bring strong delusion on them where they'll believe a lie. They'll take the mark of the beast. Uh, listen, I don't mean to be ugly. It's just my nature. When I first got saved, there was a lot of preaching on the, on the end times, on the second coming. I mean, back in the early 70s, a lot of preaching on it because we had the oil crisis with OPEC. Uh, I, I remember, uh, 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 depending on what your license plate ended in, what number, uh, if you was odd or even, you got to buy gas one day and you couldn't buy it till the next day. I mean, it was tough times uh, back in there, uh, those days. Uh, then Jimmy Carter came on the scene. That really solved everything. But anyway... Uh, uh, I remember all those days uh, and a lot of preaching on the Lord's coming uh, 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 a lot of books written on the Lord's coming uh, and I used to think as a young man uh, uh, who in the right mind would want to have a mark on their forehead uh, or a mark on their hand uh, uh, the mark of the beast who would want that uh, have you been to the mall uh, have you seen what people are putting on their faces uh, and all the spikes and all the, the uh, uh, nails and all the hey uh, I saw a little girl the other day uh, had a snout in her nose. I thought that's what you did to hogs. You put a snout in her nose so they wouldn't root. Uh, 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 but I'm telling you, uh, uh, hey, listen, uh, it's so fashionable. Uh, everybody's marking their bodies. Uh, all kinds of uh, uh, artwork. It's my canvas, my body. Uh, don't you realize that God told us in the book of Deuteronomy not to mark yourself? That's a pagan thing. Uh, hey, uh, uh, the king of the pagans is coming. He's the Antichrist. Uh, and folks will line up to take the mark. Uh, we're headed that way. It's not where my notes, but I'm just here to tell you. We don't have plenty of time. Another one of his lies is that sin has no penalty. The message of Satan is if it feels good, do it. Hmm? Listen, you know I travel a little bit. I can't go anywhere. I mean, the smallest little country town out in the middle of nowhere. I can't go anywhere that you don't find a vape shop. Huh? Satan introduced it. This will get you off cigarettes. Huh? Won't have that tar and nicotine. Well, now they're saying that vape's more addictive and more harmful than cigarettes. And people got them everywhere. We was at the fair the other night. And I'm talking about little teenage kids uh, vaping away. And that stinks. Uh, not as bad as marijuana, but it's about close. And so what are you saying? I'm saying that people have thought it's my body I can do whatever I want to. How many of these heifers have we seen march uh, about the abortion thing? My right to my body. How come it wasn't our body, our right, our choice when it came to the vaccine? Are you listening? Uh, 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 hey, uh, uh, people doing a, a sin and have no penalty of it. Uh, hey, they want to be uh, 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 sorry, no good, uh, 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 wicked uh, fornicators uh, and then get pregnant and have no consequence. Let's just go murder the baby. Uh, ease our consequences. Uh, uh, you can't sin and win, friends. Uh, the Bible says for the wages of sin is death. Uh, hey, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, but there is a penalty to sin. Uh, it's death. Uh, and then you die a second death. Uh, and you pay uh, for your sins for all of eternity. Uh, in the lake of fire, uh, there is a consequence for sin. Uh, there's consequences for your children choices. Uh, hey, nobody ever started out a drunk, uh, but they took one sip uh, and they got hooked. Uh, nobody ever st started out a drug addict, uh, but they took one hit uh, and they got hooked. Uh, hey, nobody ever started out uh, out of being uh, hooked on pornography, uh, but they just took one look uh, and they got hooked. Uh, hey, sin has consequences uh, and so does our choices. Uh, and the devil's a liar. Listen, Jesus will forgive you of your sins, but he doesn't erase your scars. And sin will scar you up, friend. Why do you think old people like me try to tell young people, don't get involved? 
you'll pay a price for it. Those scars are there to remind us of the price of sin. Hmm. Satan says sin has no penalty. He's a liar. Huh? That's why all the billboards show everybody having a good time while they're out partying with a Budweiser in their hand. They don't show the backside of the billboard of the families that get split up, of folks that get cirrhosis of the liver, of the folks that are killed uh, 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 by drunk drivers. Uh, you don't see that end of it. Sin has a price. Can I say? I'll never get through this. Satan says that prayer is worthless. It's totally unprofitable. All you're doing is talking to your ceiling. Yet God hears and answers prayer. God said, call unto me and I'll answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Can I say, Satan says, your Bible is prehistoric. Says it's outdated. It's obsolete. It's old fashioned. You need something new. Huh? Even Huey Lewis back in the 80s sang a song, I need a new drug. See, what, you, what sustains sinners will only sustain them for a little while because there's only pleasure in sin for a season. So they constantly need something more powerful. That's why uh, 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 a lot of these drug addicts are dying with fentanyl because they need something that's more powerful because they can't get as high as they used to because they get used to it. That's why so many people get hooked on prescription medicines. What used to dull their pain don't dull it anymore. Need something stronger. Need something stronger than that. Need something stronger than that. Boy, you know it. You're on uh, horse tranquilizers uh, and uh, uh, you're out of your mind. I'm trying to help you tonight. Your Bible is not prehistoric. Amen. It is as current yes. as current events. Right. It is as up to date Amen. as date can be updated. And can I say this? It will even tell us what's going to happen in the future. Huh? But he don't want you looking into the Bible. Because God chose the base things to confound the wise. God chooses the foolishness of this world to confound people. And can I say the Bible cannot be disproved or discredited. Every time they try to disprove it, all they do is prove how accurate it is. Mm. But he don't want you in the Bible. Why? So then faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. You get in the Bible, it'll open your eyes. Amen. Sitting on the front row right here was a good altar boy. Good Catholic boy. Yeah, he ended up a drunk and a mess. But he was a good Catholic. So he had a friend start showing him the Bible. And God opened his eyes. And he realized, I have believed a lie. And he put his faith in Jesus Christ. And now he's sitting on the church pew, praising the Lord, worshiping God, because the truth set him free. All religion ever does is bring damnation. Only Jesus Christ will set you free, friend. Mm -mm. Another lie of the devil. And this falls in the Joel Olstein category, the Joyce Myers category. And I hate this one, T.D. Jakes category. T.D. Jakes used to preach the Word of God until he got popular. The love of money is the root of all evil. What is the lie, preacher? If it pleases you, it pleases God. Uh, I guarantee you if it pleases you, it most likely displeases God. Hmm? God's not pleased with anything that is born of our heart or our minds or our intentions. God is pleased with holiness, with righteousness, with godliness. God is pleased uh, with humility. God is pleased with obedience. Uh, God is pleased when we are totally uh, prostrate before Him uh, and He is high and lifted up. That's what pleases God. 
But if it came from us, I guarantee you it didn't please God. And if it pleases you, it is fleshly, worldly, and wicked. And it doesn't please God. The Bible says God's angry with the wicked every day. Hmm? Doesn't sound like he's too pleased. Well, let me give you another one. The devil will lie and tell you that principles are not necessary. You say, what are you talking about? I'm talking about principles of faith, doctrine. Can I say everybody but independent Baptists will say something like this? Well, well, let's lay aside our doctrine and come together under the name of Jesus. Well, if we have no doctrine, we have no stand. We have nothing. Right. We're superficial. Back about 25 years ago, they had this thing called the Promise Keepers. Uh, they said, let's all come and hold hands, sing, come by, uh, make a difference. Uh, uh, the principles was uh, 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 nice on it. Uh, 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 let's teach men to be good fathers and good men. Uh, uh, you know what teaches men to be good fathers and good men? That Bible right there. Uh, doctrine does. Uh, uh, but they said, let's not uh, bring doctrine to the Promise Keepers. Uh, and you had the Church of God speaking in tongues. Uh, you had the Catholics taking their wafers. Uh, you had the Southern Baptists doing nothing. Uh, they all came together and had motivational speakers uh, and it opened the door for people like Joe Olstein. You have no doctrine, you have nothing. You say, what is doctrine? Doctrine is the preaching and teaching of the Word of God. As God wrote it, rightly divided. The principles of faith. He says that's not necessary. You going to please God? It is. Mm. Uh, can I say the principles of fundamentals? Convictions. Mm. There are things Christians should never do. There are places Christians should never go. There are things Christians should never say. Why? Because they're not Christ-like. Mm. We've got to have some convictions. Now listen, there's Bible convictions. If God said thou shalt, you better. If God said thou shalt not, you better run from it. But then there are personal convictions. And personal convictions come by getting in the Bible, by praying, by seeking Christ. Uh, and Christ will show you things in your life that He uh, wants you to run from and not have anything to do with. Amen. You see, uh, we're all fearfully and wonderfully made. God didn't make robots. We're all different. What may affect you might not affect me. But what might affect me might not affect you. And so God gives us personal convictions. There are certain things that we personally shouldn't uh, have anything to do with. If God tells you uh, uh, to get up every day at 4.30 in the morning and pray, you better get up every morning at 4.30 and pray. But don't look around and expect Clint to do it. He just got home from work uh, uh, at 4.30. Uh, 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 your personal conviction uh, is not to be an indictment against anybody else. Uh, that's between you and God. Uh, a Bible conviction we all got to adhere to. Uh, but personal convictions between you and God. They are necessary. Without them, we're no different than the world. Amen. You know what causes people to want what they have? To see something they don't have. Right. Mm. Listen, used to on Sunday, after church, you go out, you could tell who went to church. And now we stand out like oddballs. Uh, it's evident we've been to church. But I look around, I guess some of them have been in some of these so-called churches, but you never know it. If I get talked about, looked down upon because I look like I came from church, talk away. If I'm guilty of trying to please Christ, talk away. Uh, listen, he says principles are unnecessary, not according to the Bible. You know, God told Israel to put up a shingle so everybody knew what tribe they were from. Uh I hear it all the time. Well, you need to take Baptists off the church so to grow. There are some growth that's not good. You can grow mold in your house. That's not good. Mm. Uh, you can grow fat rats in your house. That's not good. You can grow snakes in your house. That ain't good. Not all growth is good. I just destroyed that thing right there. Stay. Can I say this? What growth is good is godly growth. I'm not interested in a crowd. I'm interested in who God wants to send our way. It's not God's will for everybody to come to our church because I'll be bald-headed and, and nuts, all right? But it is God's will for everybody seeking after God to be here. Are you listening? I'm trying to make a, a statement here. 
now, now, not all growth's good. And if I got to take Baptist off the name, that kind of growth I don't want. Because I'm proud to be a Baptist. You know what makes me a Baptist? The Bible. That's what makes me a Baptist. And when folks drive by and see Baptists, they got an idea of what we stand for. They say, oh, that's the no fun crowd. Well, come on in here and join us for a little bit. We're having the times of our lives. I'm not on my way to hell. My chains have been broken. I've been set free by the Master. Uh, listen, I want you to do away with the fundamentals. You know what I find if every church takes Baptists off the name? It turns into a circus. God's not the author of confusion. Hmm? Everything's to be done decently in an order. And there is an order to the things of God. Well, he wants us to do away with principles. Principles of faith, doctrine, principles of fundamentals, our conviction, the principles of foundations. What's our foundation? Our walk with Christ, our study in the Bible with Christ, our prayer time, our attendance to the house of God, are carrying out our duties as Christians. Those are all foundational things. Hmm? You know, there, there, there's this popular crowd in the independent movement now called Reformed Baptists. They apologize for how they were raised. And they want to be reformed. Well, I don't need to be reformed. I got reborn. Uh, but can I say this? They, they, they're constantly apologizing for, for all that we stand if you don't have the foundation of walking with God and talking with God and studying the word of God and have that personal foundation when the, the winds blow and when the storms come you, you don't hang around but it's filtering into our independent churches well you don't have to be faithful to God you can worship God on the lake uh, he, he told us to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together there's something about when we come together. He said we're two or three of God in his name. He'd be in the midst. There's something about being where he's at. Well, God's out there on the lake. Not when it's church time. He's in his house. Right, right. Mm. Uh, and those of you that have been sick or have had to watch by live stream, everybody tells me the same thing. Oh, I enjoyed it, preacher, but it's not like being there. Memorex had it good back in the 70s. Is it live or is it Memorex, huh? Well... Uh, Memorex don't do what being here does. Hmm? But see, they want to do away, but that's not necessary. Uh, well, if it wasn't necessary, why did God tell us to do it? Why did he tell the, the, the disciples when he, right before he ascended, he said, tarry ye in Jerusalem until the Comforter come. And why did they stay in that upper room for ten days? Because they had to be assembled in order for the Spirit to fall on them. You'll figure it out. Hmm? One last lie I'll deal with. Satan's a liar's father of it. And there's all kinds of falsehoods that he's made. But one that he makes is that there is no such place as hell. Do you know Jesus preached on hell far more than he preached on heaven? Uh, Billy Graham said there's no fire in hell. Jesus said there was. I'm going to believe Jesus. Hmm. That's why Billy should have never went after that false Bible. Uh, matter of fact, Jesus told us in Mark chapter number 9, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. He said that three times. Hmm? There is a fire in hell. You say, well, you know, they say hell is separation from God. It is. God's not in hell. Hmm? They say, well, hell's a, a dark place. There is no light. That's true. Well, how can you have fire where there is no light? They tell me there's a flame called the black flame. It's the hottest flame known to man. It gives off no light. Huh? You see, uh, all their arguments can't refute the word of God. There is a place called hell. Right now it's in the center of the earth. But one of these days, heaven and earth will pass away. And there will be a great white throne judgment in Revelation chapter 20. And the dead and the wicked dead will be called before God and they'll be judged out of the books for all their sin. You see, you and I that are saved by the good grace of God, we were judged for sin at Calvary. Hmm? Yeah. Can I say when Jesus saved me, Brother Tony, he saved me from my past sins, 
my present sins and my future sins. My sin will never be held accountable to me anymore because they're gone. Now, I don't understand that because even sins I haven't committed yet are already gone. I don't understand that, but they're gone. But I can say this. When I do sin and fail the grace of God, it does not affect my relationship. I'm still saved. I'm still part of the family of God. It affects my fellowship. I'm out of fellowship with God when I have sin in my life. That's why he gave us 1 John 1, 9. If we'll confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. What a blessing. And can I say this? Uh, my sin problem was taken care of at Calvary. Right. But I'm going to a place, not the great white throne judgment. I'm going to the judgment seat of Christ. Right. And at the judgment seat of Christ... In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, we find that we will give an account of the deeds done in our body, whether they be good or evil. 1 Corinthians 3, not 2. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 5, 10 tells us we'll go to the judgment seat of Christ. But 1 Corinthians chapter 3 says, of our deeds, anything we've overcome, they'll be tried by fire, mm -hmm. and they'll come out as silver, gold, or precious stones, rewards. But those deeds done in our body that didn't bring glory to God will burn up wood, uh, wood, hay, and stubble. You say, what are you talking about? How we conduct ourselves according to the Word of God and, and the Spirit of God will determine what rewards we have in heaven. And it will also determine how we will serve in the kingdom. Can I say that some in here will rule over nations and some will rule over the dog catcher. Depends on how faithful you are here. We'll determine how you rule there. But see, every time that the Holy Spirit tells us to do something and we're obedient, you'll get a reward. But every time He tells us to do something and we don't, you'll lose a reward. Hmm? If He tells you to call somebody, invite them to church, you better call them. If He tells you during the service you need to go to the altar, you better go to the altar. If He tells you to testify, you better testify. If he doesn't tell you to testify and you do testify, you lose reward. Because he didn't tell you to do it. You told you to do it. It's a very serious thing. Serving God. But can I say that crowd that dies without Jesus Christ, they'll be before the Bema seat, the great white throne judgment, Revelation 20. Again, heaven and earth has passed away. They are there, Brother Josh, standing on the power of God. There's nothing for him to stand on but his power. Uh, mm, to use an old quip, they won't have a leg to stand on before the Lord. And it's not determined at the great white throne judgment if they get a second chance to go to heaven. That's already been determined. It will be determined how severe their punishment in the lake of fire. And uh, because they wouldn't let Jesus pay for their sins... They'll pay for their own sins for all of eternity. They'll never be given an opportunity to get out because their sins will never be paid for. Because the only thing that atones for sin was the blood of Jesus Christ. And those folks, death and hell have delivered them up. They'll be judged and they'll be cast off in a place called the lake of fire where they'll burn forever and ever and ever. Can I say this? What do people do in hell? They worship Jesus Christ because they know He's Lord. And they know that He is justified to be worshipped and they deserve to be there because they rejected Him. And in hell, they'll remember every opportunity they had to get saved and they rejected Him. They'll remember every message they heard preached. They'll remember every gospel tract they were handed. They'll remember every time they drove by a church. They'll remember every opportunity God tried to get their attention. They'll spend eternity in hell. And see, the devil don't want people to know that. So he says there is no place like there is no place called hell. He invented things called reincarnation. Hmm. Now seriously, think about this. I can understand if you start out as a grasshopper and then you became a bunny rabbit and then you become a, a, a good, you know, St. Bernard mm -hmm. and then you ended up as you. That's a pretty good deal. But the next step is to become a cow. Come on. 
It's all downhill after him. Huh? Think about it. Somebody has to be drinking some pretty powerful sake to come up with that junk. You know what I'm saying? Huh? But people believe it. Nations believe that. One of the largest, most populated nations on the earth believes that. India. Huh? He comes up with all kinds of lies about hell. Huh? The youth of our day say, well, I'm going to die and go to hell and party with my friends. There's no party going on in hell. Mm -mm. But they've been lied to. Mm -mm. Uh, and so many people have believed his lies rather than believe the truth. You know why? Because it's easier to believe a lie than to believe the truth. We can announce 20 people got saved this week at church and it won't get up the street. But you announce that a preacher messed up. And it will be known throughout the country before the week's over. You, bad news travels a lot faster than good news. And people don't like listening to truth. They like the lie. Isn't it amazing how everything has a conspiracy theory now? Because people want the lie. They don't want the truth. And just in case you don't know it, they don't have anything on Trump. If they did, we'd know it. They've been looking for five years. Why? Because they hate him. Because he revealed who they were. Republican and Democrats. Career politicians, swamp meisters, what they are. Huh? Huh? Can I say... The devil wants everybody's attention off the fact that Jesus is coming and they need to get born again or they're going to die and go to hell. Because he wants to take as many people to the lake of fire with him as he can. Now you and I, they're born again. They've been called of God to be salt and light to spread the truth, the gospel, that they don't have to die and go to hell. There's good news. Your sins can be forgiven. You can have hope. You can have a better life. A life full of joy, unspeakable and full of glory. You can enjoy life and you can enjoy Friday night and Saturday night and wake up the next day and know what you did. And it all is a very simple message that is, has a simple, simple message way to receive it. Made it so simple even a child can understand. Now, I don't know about you, but I like it when little fellows like Joseph says, I'm glad I'm saved. I want to thank the Lord for saving me. Because Jesus loves him just as much as he loves anybody else. And he made it so simple that even a child can understand. The devil's the one that complicates things. Why the message tonight? Satan's working overtime, spewing lies. You and I need to get to work spreading truth because Jesus is coming. Tonight, you ought to be thankful. You have and know the truth. But see, Paul said, I'm a debtor to the gospel because we received it. We have a responsibility to share it with others. Let's do all we can to refute the lies spewed from hell. Let's all stand tonight. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. Maybe you want to come thank the Lord you're saved. It's only by the grace of God you wasn't raised a Hindu. It's only by the grace of God you heard the gospel. Maybe tonight you just want to come tell Jesus you love him. Maybe tonight he spoke to your heart and there's some areas he's not pleased with and you want to come tell him you're sorry. I don't know. But I know we need to take advantage of the privileges afforded us. While they're picking our song, let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for truth. Thank you, Lord, for the faculties to understand and receive the truth. Thank you, Lord, for living up to every word you've ever spoke. Lord, we're thankful you never change. We're thankful, Lord. You loved a sinner even such as I. 
And Father, help us. Help us, Lord, to get so close to you, they'll take note like they did back when you walked among men. They said they took note of those men they'd been with Jesus. And God, I pray we'd be able to point folks to you and we'd see folks get saved by the good grace of God. Forgive us of our shortcomings. Help us, Lord, in our infirmities and failures. Lord, help us to be more like Christ. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.